Welcome, everybody. Another episode of Dr. Homebrew. Feel like it's been four years since we've done a show, you guys. I feel like it's been entirely too long. I mean, we've had some holidays in between, so we've there's some, that. But yeah. yeah. Well, mainly my birthday, and then, you know, and then, of course, yeah. Thanksgiving or whatever it is. I don't know. But stuff. It's my stuff, really. It's me. That's yeah. what people care about the most. You know what my I mean? My birthday was on Thanksgiving. It was? Yeah. People around Shop. the world gave thanks for my birth. Happy birthday, young man. <laughs> Thanks, man. How does it oh. you so you we never really thought you would make it this far, but how does it feel? <laughs> how does um, it feel hitting 65? I don't is uh, it like I'm a young looking 57, I guess, or an old looking, <laughs> I don't know. It's I'm I'm feeling pretty good. Although I have to say this last year is the first year where I've actually felt kind of old. <laughs> okay. The first year, really. I've oh. been feeling old for like six years. No, I've it's I've managed to get to fifty seven without really feeling old. No, good and for you. Twenty 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 three. I'm like I I feel old this year. <laughs> okay, all right. I also had a birthday since the last time we we Whoa, met. No shit. Can we all on here? We never established this before. I guess. No, but, Cooper. Happy birthday. Yeah, happy mine's birthday, man. October twenty first. It's been that long since <laughs> we've done a show. It's been over a month. It's been we, like six yeah. weeks. We did it earlier in October because we wanted Julia uh, from the AHA to come on with us. And that was when it fit in her schedule. Right. So, uh, yeah, that was perfect. We did it a little earlier than usual. It has been a while, but I did not know. Again. I did yeah. not know we were all birthday brothers. I'm November 7th. Scott, David, welcome to the show. It's a birthday talk. <laughs> we're doing astrology. What's your guys' sign? When were you guys born? Hmm. Uh, I'm a cancer. I'm a cancer. So I'm, I'm about five months away. So. Okay. I'm not in the realm with you guys. <laughs> You're not in any danger of being a part of this. I'm a Libra. Yeah, everyone's Libras. Right. There we go. Oh, know. hey. I don't know. What that All means. right. Then he's he's close to us too. Then right. Okay. Well, see. There you go. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, David. I um, guess you know, Jason and Brian. I guess our parents all had sex on Valentine's Day. It's probably uh, about what happened. Not that I want to think about that, but you know. I actually I have the video, like the the you. The, Super, the Super 8. My Ew. dad was really into um, <laughs> like gadgets and stuff, and so he like they were actually like recorded it. Yeah, right. I I think that I'm totally I would be joking. Into... By the way, I'm well, yeah, I'll, I'll, I would be wiping the vomit off of that if I if I found that somehow. That would just be oh god. No. I tell you, man. Like, uh, I remember distinctly one time being at my brother's house with my uh, my sister in law's like family, so like cousin in laws or whatever. I don't know. And she was, this girl was babysitting me. She's probably, I don't know, five or eight years older than me or whatever. And everyone was gone and we're like, oh, we should watch a movie. Let's like watch something, you know? And so she was looking through the tapes. She goes, oh, here's one. And she puts it in. And before it starts, my brother comes home. My sister-in-law comes home and she goes, what are you guys going to do? And she goes, oh, I'm going to show Jason, um, you know, Amanda's birthing video. Amanda's my niece. And so I was, I don't know, maybe uh, 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 10 or 12 at the time or whatever. And I'm like, she's like, no, <laughs> because, you know, yeah. the, it was it was a full on here it comes. And I'm, <laughs> I feel like I dodged a bullet. But at the time I was like, well, I don't understand what's what's so wrong. She's like, you can't. No, don't just show. No, me. God. It's not, I, it's I, not uh, like I, uh, I, bar mitzvah. Uh, here's a cruise we took. And then also here's my my child crowning from my vagina. <laughs> This it's just nothing. right there for the grabbing and viewing. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't watch my daughter come out of the shoot in real life. <laughs> I, I was a father at the head. Okay. I didn't I didn't want to see that in real who would want to watch that right. in any circumstance at all. People people enjoy it. Um I had to hear it. I I, I heard it nope. and um I was up at the head. I was like, I'm fine up here. Like, Dad, do you want to come? Nope. Yep. Nope. I'm here, <laughs> man. I am up here. But anyway. Welcome to birth, uh, the birth talk, everybody. We're talking about our births, <laughs> our birthdays, astrology signs, the ascendant masters, the whole nine yards. No, <laughs> we're talking Dr. Homebrew. We have some homebrew today. We have two homebrewers here with us. It's a co-brew, a collab brew, which uh, we always really appreciate and enjoy here on the show. But before we get to that, we want to thank our sponsor, Five Star Chemicals. The good people at Five Star Chemicals are bringing you this and every show. They, as Jamil says, they pay for it so you don't have to. And that's mostly true, um, but they are great people. They have been with us since the get go. They get what we're trying to do here, uh, not only on the Brain Network, but on Dr. Homebrew as well. And they try to do a similar thing. We try to help you make good beer and they try to help you make clean beer, which clean beer 
is usually good beer. You know what I mean? So check them out, fivestarchemicals.com. And while you're over there, join the Homebrew Club program they have. You can get uh, discounts on PBW. You can maybe test out new products from Five Star before they're even on the market. You can get free monthly educational sessions and maybe free swag too. You never know. So check them out, fivestarchemicals.com. Join the Homebrew Club. Everyone's cool. Okay, man, I tell you, I, <laughs> I've had, I've had, I've had a week, man. My, my sound, uh, my sound machine, my soundboard died on me. Like my, my thing the other day, my roadcaster, like died, but it's like glitching and sort of not. And I've been trying to deal with customer service from road, but they're in Australia. So right. they email back like seven o'clock and I write back and go, oh yeah, I've done that. And then I don't hear from them until the next, <laughs> next night. And it's like, can we, yep. just, I gotta go. I, you know, so I've had to like, I've bought two different sets of things. I returned some stuff. I'm trying to plug it in. It's not working. Now it's suddenly magically working. I got a, a, a whole new system and um, that's a lot cheaper, but it's hot as hell. It's like on fire. So that's interesting. Anyways, I've been dealing with that for like two days. I, I recorded a show on Monday night. I haven't even edited it yet. It's just, I've, I've been like figuring out audio problems and it is not fun. I tell this, you, but this is going to be the best sounding show ever just because of it might that. be honestly, because I hated the way the other, the processing on the other one sounded that digital soundboard just, I didn't like it. And I was always suffering from it. And you know how I like to suffer. So you, you know, it sounds better it. already. I, I'm not kidding. I, it, it, I'm not always in love with how that old one sounded. And this one sounds a lot nicer. I appreciate that because it's, it's just, it's just a feed from the microphone into the board. There's no compression. There's no, there's no processing. There's no anything. Really? Yeah. Well, anyway. we're just hearing ourselves on the Zoom thing, but uh, yeah. yeah, what we hear. Wow. You, hey, ZZ, okay. here's from old head. ZZ is in the chat on Facebook and then Blobber's on the chat now. Wow. No shit, Blobber. Hey. <laughs> oh my God. Dude. I haven't talked to him in years. Yeah, I know. A little Canadian friend. Anyways. <clears throat> All right. Scott and David, welcome to the show, fellas. I appreciate you hanging on through our, you know, little BS session. Thanks for having Not us. Not a problem. Of course, yeah. So what beer did you guys make for us? What do you, what do you got for us? Well, we've got a, a mixed fermentation sour. We've uh, Something we've been working on for about a year and a half. Uh, okay. We've got about four or five different beers mixed in there over the last 18 months. And um, it's we've just been riding it out, testing it from time to time, and finally got around to bottling some and see where it see where it's at and what we need to do moving forward a mixed mixed fermentation sour and you have a couple of beers i mean you're 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 brewing it and then adding to it yeah we've got a i don't know if you can see this here we've got a 15 gallon vessel oh yeah and <laughs> we've wow. uh yeah and we we started, like I said, about 18 months ago, we started with five gallons. Then a few months later, we had another five. And all, all told, we put 20 gallons into there. We pulled five gallons out and a couple of gallons here and there. Over but, time, uh, you're uh, adding in. That's interesting. Okay. I, well, wonder, how, the, I whole, wonder how that's going to affect of, the beer. You know, and part of our goal is to keep this going. And every so often, we'll take five gallons out. Hopefully, it'll be a good sour. We'll drink it. We'll put some more in. Let it start to sour from the beer that's there. So hopefully, it'll be a continuing batch that we have. Yeah, that's the Solara method, right? Solara, yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, I got it. I got you. Okay. Well, I'm excited. I don't know that we've had a beer like this before. Is it the same base beer all the time? So Not, three, not 100%, but pretty similar, yeah. Okay. Cool. Most most of it is wet. Part of it is a more of a standard Belgian wheat, kind of a blue moon type uh, base beer. So those are the okay. two main contributions to it. Awesome. Great. Well, I can't wait to to jump into this. Uh, Cooper. All right. You want to start us off, buddy? <clears throat> well, we've got a. Uh, a it's nice... the twenty. It's the twenty B, right? On the twenty eight B. Yeah, that's the right B. one. Got yeah. We've got a Sam Adams bottle here, and I, when I opened it, there was no hiss, uh, and that was as as was discussed earlier. Uh, the, uh, the gentleman had a, a little problem getting the uh, the bottle uh, carbonation to take hold in time for us to taste it, because I guess we threw it together pretty quick. And I've had it in the you know I I don't know uh, I just got it from Brian the other day, but I've had it in the fridge since then, and uh, if 
yeah, if it was bottle conditioning early on, it it, it hasn't been continuing to <laughs> at least since you know Thanksgiving weekend. So, but um, open it up and and uh, pour a bit here and and yeah. Uh, sorry that that carbonation didn't work out for you yet, but we'll. Uh, we're going to save the other bottles too, Brian and I, and, and, and taste it again later sometime. So maybe we can revisit that. Uh, in the nose, I'm getting a kind of a light grainy malt. Uh, but um, I would say there's a, a moderate acetic note up front. It's kind of reminiscent of a, a Duchess, but without the, the rich malt of a Flanders red. It's more of an apricot-like fruitiness here that pervades... Uh, not getting any obvious funk or or any major Brett character coming through here. There's not it's not a super funky sour, and, and that's fine. That can be at varying levels. Um, there is some sharp lactic sou sourness here too. Um, I was wondering if I got some slight, um, a little bit of diacetyl, but uh, not getting any DMS or anything. But there is kind of a grainy quality to it overall, uh, cereal like, I guess. Appearance wise, it's a hazy deep gold uh and uh or kind of light amber colored beer, uh no head and uh therefore no retention or color to the head also. Uh that's fine. Um you know, you you could serve these not non-carbonated if you wanted, I, I I suppose, but it's uh you know, uh I think the intention here was to have some some carbonation. Uh that's okay, but it's it's definitely not uh, insanely hazy. It's not totally opaque, um, but it's yeah. Um, and head retention on on these sours can be poor as it is, so there is a little carbonation in there. It's just not pushing that much up. Um, so getting into the flavor, there's a blend of lactic and acetic sour, uh, probably mostly uh, lactic here medium level yeah it's not teeth meltingly sour and it's not just <laughs> nearly tart no the balances to the uh to the malt for sure uh no hops noted here um the belgian wit american wheat styles are coming through or the you know the belgian uh wheat beer you know it's kind of like a weedy overall coming through as a general grainy quality um not unpleasant, but it's also coming across to me like a, there's a bit of a uh, THP, like a Cheerio-like, um, it's called tetrahydropyridine. Um, you get that on the exhale as you swallow the beer and your the pH of your mouth comes back up more towards neutral. On the exhale, you can taste that um, a little Cheerio-like thing in there. And yeah. Mouse taint I, is what they call I, it, right? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, THP. That it's kind of a medium low level of that. Um, I'm I'm still trying to decide if there's diacetyl in it. I'm not really getting a super buttery thing at all in here. In the I flavor. do. I do. Like in the it, medium palate, it's kind of heavy. It's honestly. kind of okay. Yeah, it's it's kind of hard in these two because there's so much else going on to yeah compete with it. But I thought you know, and the aroma I definitely got a a little butteriness, and the flavor it's blending with that that THP. But can I just can I just butt in and say yeah, that it, it actually works really well? Like right. I kind of like it. Uh, you know, it's it is it's like movie theater popcorn. It's sort of one of the more, for me, the more standout like diacetyl. But with everything else going on in the beer, it it kind of works, and I'm not offended by it in the slightest. Okay, I don't know. That's just me. Um. So yeah, there's different, um, you know, PDO can kick out some diastol if you've got some PDO going in there, but it doesn't seem like ropey or, you know, it doesn't have any uh, weird chunkiness in there or anything. So, uh, but yeah. Um, like me. Anyway, it might, it, you know, sometimes the, a, a sour will just go through phases where it kicks out some diastol and then it gets reabsorbed and, and, and ages out. And same with THP, that can that can go away um, over time here too. And, and as you, I find that Solaris seem to me to be less um, susceptible to that if you keep them going and keep, uh, you know, keep the, oh, we'll get to feedback down the road, but, uh, you know, keep them covered, keep them, you know, not a lot of headspace, keep the, yeah. the, the airlock full. 
Like the man uh, says, you got to keep them separated, right? Blank, yeah, blanket with CO2 if you're going to open it up a lot and muck around with the beer, yeah, which can be tempting. The more you just leave them alone, sometimes the better, <laughs> other than airlock. Uh, yeah, uh, mouthfeel-wise, it's a medium light-bodied with no carbonation. It's not warming or astringent. Uh, no creaminess either. There's a low bite to it, but it's not too aggressive of an attack. Uh, still just a touch a touch of some kind of roughness but it's not like a super leathery biting harsh you know attacking astringent beer at all um it's fairly smooth on the palate and the sourness is not too biting it's not too acidic um but yeah overall this this tastes kind of like a sour that's not quite through its process where you know it's not sick but the flavors are really not quite melding together yet the way you like it to. I do like the the apricot fruitiness that's in there, and that's something that might come through more in time as some of these other things either age out or morph into something else. Um, I would say the acetic quality being a little higher already, it may be hard to um, you know age one like this. It's you know if if you keep it like I said, airlocks full, all of that stuff, uh, uh, minimize oxygen contact with it. It, it shouldn't go crazy. But, um, you know, tr uh, another thing you can do too is to add some, uh, some bread to the beer to give it a little more of a funky character and the bread is going to chew on some of the other things that are in there and, um, you know, add some, some complexity and it'll, um, age out. But again, I think that the, the, some of the classic advice for, for reducing the THP is, uh, avoiding oxygen in the presence of, of bread. So, um, you know, if you do add Brett, keep it, you know, keep the oxygen, um, exposure as low as possible. I'm sure there's, you know, there's going to be oxygen in there, but, uh, you know, just let it, let it age a little bit more. And, um, uh, yeah, it'd be, it'd be fun too, to talk about how you bottle conditioned it, what kind of, um, sugars you might've added or, or yeast. I know that some breweries like, um, Russian river, We'll put a wine yeast in when they when they bottle condition like their consecration, and because um, you know so, <laughs> in such a low pH environment, the uh, you know the the existing yeast strains are already probably very tired and maybe not ready to keep it. Oh, let's keep it going. Hey, here's a little sugar. Let's go. <laughs> um, it might take many weeks or months to get to that level with the existing. Uh, a strain and uh, it'll, it'll go through its own, own morphing as it's doing that too. Uh, a little re-fermentation and that again can kick out things like diacetyl and things like that. So um, if possible, I like, I would just say, can you put it in a keg and just shake condition or, you know, or time uh, carbonate it in the, in the keg instead mm -hmm. of messing with bottle conditioning Uh but there may be a reason you wanted to do that. So I don't know. I, I, with so many things going on to me, I know JP kind of liked the balance and liked the diacetyl. To me, the THP was a, a fairly distracting and the acetic and the diacetyl. It came out, to, you know, in the good territory uh, to me. I landed at a, at a 23 as it is now, but I could see a lot of room for improvement. It's really, the base beer here is not bad at all. It's got a nice light, you know, light pale sour kind of quality. And it's going to um, probably just continue to improve as you, uh, you know, pull, pull it off and add more quality beers, really limit the oxygen as you do that and um, uh, keep it going. And and like I said, maybe add some Brett and play around with it. Um, and you could also, you know, split it up too, if it's really, um sour pull some off and add some adding new fresh beer it's going to keep it aging and keep it keep it going and and the you know i have sour carboys that i've had for you know a, a decade in my closet and they've from what they originally were you know the, the to what they are now they it's each one has morphed very uh you know slowly over time and 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 change character as i add different things to them what did you give it so, uh 23 okay perfect yeah that's, right, that's where it falls for me got it all right char let's move it not move it all i don't right. know why i said that well, but, uh, <laughs> let's, let's go let me keep it let me go go faster go faster yeah. uh scott yeah. are you at a homebrew club i gotta ask my usual question no not currently no okay 
neither neither am I. We should both go to a Doe's beating sometime. <laughs> it's probably if you're close enough to drop off beer, we can probably both make it to Doe's one of these days. But uh, you know, I I like this beer, and I I don't have a lot of comments other than what uh, in addition to what Cooper said, and he's really the the sour guy. But I I have a, a few thoughts uh, myself. Uh, I, I didn't get much hiss. I know when you dropped it off with me, you told me to let it sit out and try to carbonate some more. And I I did. And then it was Thanksgiving. And then because it was Thanksgiving, they got put out in the garage, uh, not in a fridge, just out sitting out in the garage. And it was not as warm as it has been in the last few days. So it's probably why one reason it hasn't gotten as carbonated as it, it might. Uh, there was almost no hiss when I opened it. I made that comment. Uh, I definitely got diacetyl butter up front more than anything else. Uh, low malt, uh, no hop aroma, got sort of a low acetic. Uh, Brian brought up the Duchess. It wasn't quite like the Duchess, which is almost like drinking carbonated balsamic vinegar, if you yeah, think about it. I can't do a Duchess, man. I, I gave up. I, mm. I've, I've tried. You know, the first time I had it, I was like, oh, this may be an off bottle. But it is very on the uh, heavy on the side of nail polish remover for me. I just I can never yeah. do it. Sweet nail polish remover. It's just not good. Mm. I, I like the Duchess, but as, having said that, I haven't had a Duchess in probably 12 years, 15 years. Mm. So I don't know if I drank one now. Who knows how much I'd, I'd care for it. There yeah. was a time when I bought like a case of it, and every one of them was a, a, a gusher. And I'm like, okay, they, they had some quality control issues like uh, a, a little bit in, their, in the early 2000s. Uh, neither here nor there. Uh, so the aroma, I mean... I gave it a five out of 12 just because of so much diacetyl was, was there. Uh, and I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit at the end too. Uh, appearance three out of three uh, hazy is okay. You know, this is a style of mixed fermentation where uh, it, it should kind of match the base beer, but it doesn't have to. Uh, so I didn't knock any points for that. Uh, almost no head uh, medium gold in color. You know, I was surprised by the haze on a sour beer. And I didn't knock off any points. There's nothing wrong with it. But a lot of the time, especially like a, a wit beer or a wheat base beer, those are the kind of bigger, bigger starches that the the bacteria really love to chew down in a sour beer. Uh, so it's it's not unprecedented to have a hazy sour, but it's, it's a little, little hazier than I'd expected. Uh, flavor uh, at first. Uh, Interestingly enough, it, I didn't get a ton of lactic flavor, but right out of the gate, there's some lactic sharpness that Im I, I got initially. Then, then some of the, the diacetyl sort of a butter flavor, uh, low level of sourness, which now there's a little bit warmer. I come back to this, I'd say more like medium sour. Uh, uh, it's hard to tell if there's any bitterness because the, the sourness I think is enough that it, kind of overtakes any any hot bitterness that will be in here. Uh, by mid-palate, I started to get some Brett Funk, uh, which I thought was really nice. And it made the, the finish to be more comp more complex because there was that that funkiness. Uh, there's a huge, uh, echo what Brian said, a huge Cheerios flavor all the way through. And it's not, sometimes you got to really, people I think go to extremes to try to see if they can taste it and this was not a thing where you had to go to extremes to try to taste it. There was a lot of THP uh, in, in this sample. Uh, the finish was long and balanced more toward the funk and the sour. Uh, I'll give it 10 out of 20 for flavor. Uh, Mouthfeel, um, medium body, uh, very low carbonation, neither creamy nor astringent. So it's a three on mouthfeel. Uh, overall impression, I gave it a six for a total of 27. I, I think this has the potential to be what a really good beer. You know, we've all had sour beers where you have a sip and you're like, oh, dear God, this will never get any better. It was it, it's not good. And <laughs> then it's not going to get better with time. Right. The There's nothing the diacetyl. You know, I, I agree with you, JP. I, I didn't hate it. It was out of place. But I think it's something my first thought was this is a younger beer. And I made a comment here that I wonder if. uh uh the, the diacetyl makes me think it's young. And that's kind of the downside of the Solera method is the upside is you constantly have a lot of bugs in there. They're constantly regenerating and they're happy. And you're, you're, you're not having to go pitch a bunch of bacteria or yeast every single time uh, that you're trying to, uh, you're adding some more work. The, the downside is it never finishes in a sense, right? Because 
I, I guess if you don't add anything for a long time, what you have in there can finish. But if you're always adding something new, it never gets done. You know, I'm, I'm not a sour beer expert. You know, Cooper's the the sour beer expert of this this group by by far. But I, I wonder if that was maybe part of the part of the issue is. I, I don't know. I, I'm looking forward to you guys telling us when the last time you added some some work to this. Are you saying uh, the the problem is that it it can't ever finish, so the bugs and the yeast can't ever clean up all the kind of weird stuff they that, off put. That that's a guess. That's yeah. a guess on my yeah. part. But I just want to make. I just want to see if that's what you're saying. Yeah, that, that that's what yeah. I'm what I'm saying. And I, I'm not into, I'm not sure I'm right on that because yeah. I've never done a Solera, and I'm not a, a big sour beer beer brewer. Never. I think I made one once maybe twice, but I'm, I'm not a, not an expert by any means, but no. that's what I, I wonder if that's maybe why I thought it was young. Uh, and yeah. I mean, it was, has potential to be a really interesting beer. I'd like to come back to it in six months and we've got a bottle and maybe we'll just hang on to it and we can have that. Maybe we do a show in six months about that That'd bottle, yeah. see what we think about it. Uh, but that's you know, ultimately a 27 out of 50. It's, it's in the good category. Uh, I think largely because, I, I believe in the potential of the beer more than I believe in what it is this exact second. Interesting. Okay. Very good. All right. Um, let's see. Who wants to, Scott, you look like you're ready. You have a piece of paper in your hand. Why don't you, uh, you want to talk to us a little bit about, uh, I'm ready to go. Yeah, about the recipe and, and all that kind of stuff? Well, yeah, that's when I compiled these notes yesterday, getting ready for tonight. Uh, the thing that struck me was that yeah, overall, I think you're right, Brian and Brian. It, it is overall young. Um, the first beer that we started souring was 18 months ago, but as recently as two months ago, we added some PDO and we added a, uh, a Belgian wit that I've been brewing with a, an Imperial Sour Batch yeast, which has some Brett and Lacto in it as well. So that was only added to this batch two months ago. Um, and before that, we up the we tried to up the gravity a bit about four months ago by adding just some uh, just a DME wort solution because we weren't seeing the changes we hoped to see. Huh. Interesting. Um, and then nine months ago, we added some uh, some lacto. And so, yeah, there were a lot of recent additions in the last four to six months. So I can I can see where this definitely needs some more time to to sort itself out. Yeah. P PDO only two months ago. That's, that's not very much time for PDO at all in my understanding. And, and that was the yeah. first, that was the first edition of PDO that we added. Um, in fact, we were, we, when we were tasting it three or four months ago, we weren't getting as much funk as we thought we would like. And we thought that might be the way to do it. And I find it very interesting that you guys have noticed the diacetyl so much. And I think mm -hmm probably from that recent PDO edition. Does that sound like something you guys would think is the case? The PDO is going to, going to kick yeah. out some Cooper. Yeah. Yeah. Some butter. Yep. But it'll, yeah, okay. it goes through that phase and then it, it, it'll, it'll clean itself up uh, later on down the road, I think. So yeah. six months yeah. from now is to be a totally different beer. And then just yeah. talking about the pace of Solera, like, I don't think it's impossible for a Solera to ever be finished. It's not. If you pull off, five gallons and replace five gallons every month, then of course it's never going to be finished. If you pull off five gallons every six months uh, to a year and let it go, you know, it's, but yeah, it's, it's going to take, you know, minimum, you know, six to 12 months from the last edition, probably for it to be quite right or getting there. And then that's when I would pull off the, the one. You can always start another one too. <laughs> so, so a little, a little slower. <clears throat> excuse oh, me. So what you're saying is that basically in order to get everything to kind of blend right, it needs to hang out in that fermenter for a year, not adding anything in and letting things really kind of pile on. I would say, you know, six months to a year, because there's already, the bugs are already pretty happy in there. It's, it's probably accelerating and starting to, you know, um, as you feed it, it's keeping those bugs excited, keeping them going. There's going to be more of them in there. What and what about pulling off a, like pulling off you know five gallons or whatever? If you're going to add, let's say they're going to add five gallons, and they want to they want to keg some or bottle some. Or what about pulling that off into a, a keg, purging it, and then letting it age in a keg for you know three months just to finish out in that keg, while you can still top off your Solara and kind of keep it going that way? Is that a thing or? 
yeah, that'd be another, another way you can do it. Or you could use that, that, you know, that keg, you know, let, let something go for a longer time and, and mm -hmm. then do a blending at the end and just have a number of different ones where you've, okay, we've aged this one 18 months. It's plenty sour. The main, the mother batch is not quite as sour as we want. And then blend those things until you get what you want. But yeah, there's a lot of different things you can do. Um, no, this is the guy with a 10 year old car boy. <laughs> it's his closet. Uh, it's, it's <laughs> oh, man, I bet, I bet blending thing is fun, a lot of fun for you. Yeah. I, I there's things the you can one. do, but should you? That's the question. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you, you should, um, you know, limit oxygen. Keep, I would keep, you know, adding, uh, uh Brett, whenever you have something he's cleaning up. And with this one, I think it's, you know, it's, you know, like you guys said, it's not getting quite as funky as you you wanted it to. Give that PDO a chance to develop, and that'll help somewhat. Uh, but Brett is going to be the one that gives more of that, you know, the hay like and and interesting kind of you know barnyardy farmyard kind of qualities, depending where it goes. Hay like and and uh, yeah, horse blanket and some fun stuff. But uh, you know, depending on and there's a lot of different strains of Brett that you can play with. Uh, so you know. Um, read up on what you want might want to add to it and add add different kinds of brett to it you know you don't have to use just one <laughs> there's a lot of different bacteria in there already but um yeah i think we kind of interrupted that where you were you were talking about the beer still and um if there were some notes that you wanted to keep going on there um we'd love to hear what else uh, what else you guys did what do you know what kind of brett you added in when you added the brett um David, I don't know. I had there's the, the sour batch in, from Imperial. They say it has three strains of Brett, and I don't know what those three strains were. And then I know we added one pack of Brett back in September of 22, but my notes don't say which strain that was. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I have out of it, also. Cool. Yeah. I don't yeah. want to do a crap on your beer too much. I feel bad about the score a little bit, but I mean, <laughs> it's really cool what you're doing. And I, I think the way I want yeah. to, that to get lost, that what you're doing is is really cool. And people try it from time to time. And that's a really cool thing to do, especially at a homebrew level. And I, you know, if Cooper says it can get finished, I believe him. Uh, and I just keep, keep it up. And he says you can do more than one. And it sounds like the voice of a man that's done more than one at a time. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, it's, it's really cool and it's creative. And I really appreciate getting the chance to drink it. Yeah, I do yeah, like it. It's been, it's been a lot of fun. I think the the wit beer and the the wheat the the Belgian wheat and the the wit are you know because you said you had a combination of two. I think I like that idea. I think they are bringing something different to the blend. Um, yeah, I would love this taste taste it carbonated. You know, because I think maybe that can kind of hide some of the diacetyl. I don't I don't really know. Um, but yeah, I. It's super unique. I, I think it's very interesting, and I, I definitely want you guys to to try to keep going at it and you know perfect it a little bit and kind of work on some of those um, those flaws there and work on your timing. And um, I think the flavors are cool. I really like it. Well, this is I, this is definitely a, a project in process, and part of yeah. our going on was to get your input to see how we yeah. could impact it moving forward. I think I think you're getting there. Um, I think mm -hmm. you're getting there pretty good. Yeah, there's like a citrusy orange tangerine kind of thing happening too. I yeah, that's super interesting. I like it. Cool. Yeah, we did a club pale sour and we put it in a, a wine barrel for 12 months and we didn't get to, you know, we tasted it, a, you know, a year afterwards at our <clears throat> our holiday party and it wasn't there. It it was a lot like this one. And mm -hmm. then we waited another 6 months. Actually, we waited and then the pandemic kicked in and we couldn't taste it again for a long while and when we tasted it again it was completely different <laughs> yeah but like maybe a little went a little too long <laughs> but it was definitely much more sour it was it was like this it wasn't quite as sour as i wanted it the flower flavors hadn't kind of melded yet um, so so what can we get, let's give them a couple tips on how they can imp improve it i mean we talked a little bit about timing but maybe like something solid yeah time limit oxygen add more bread yeah okay but you can also turn okay. it red if you want to add a darker beer or, you know, a richer beer to it. Yeah. I like personally, I like the the, the redder uh, mixed fermentation sours and they get a little more Flandersy and kind of fun.
but um, you know, if you want to perfect the pale sour, this is uh, a good one to, you know, well, to this, is, this is sour collaboration project one. We also have project number two, which is a brown ale that we're working on souring. Oh, oh nice. Cool. Fun. Like, a, like an Oud Bruin or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. No, I, I think you guys, you know, I think it's a little bit too soon after the PDO, but I like the fact you can tell there's been lacto, PDO, Brett fermentation. Uh, you know, you can tell there's some complexity with what's yeah. been eating your your wort uh, and making some flavors. And you know, I'm I'm looking forward to, to trying the other bottle of this in a few months. Absolutely. Well, yeah, I, the, I know where you live now, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, um, and the Brett needs something to chew on. So if you, you know, if you're just adding things as you're going, it doesn't have to be a, a, a perfectly balanced example of any beer. Uh, I would brew it on the sweeter side and let it, you know, have a residual gravity after the ale yeast that you've used has fermented it out. So just use a really high mash temp, um, yeah. add, you know, cara, cara pills or whatever kind of malts you want to use to, increase that finishing gravity of the the base beer and then then again wheat and things like that oats wheat those kind of adjuncts will also give it long starch you know chains to chew on the brett loves to chew on that stuff and it goes for a long time and it'll take a long while for those flavors to develop but when they do they're going to really start kicking in um another thing that you can do is also add uh wood aging the, the beer you can mm -hmm. you, you could drop a couple of oak cubes in the in the beer mm -hmm. or a spiral and and get it to where it's going to have some wood character which is also going to probably help the flavors balance but you know uh that's more of a finishing thing i would kind of wait till it's in the territory you want it to be and then decide if you want to you know put a spiral in one of your kegs and you know and wood age one of them and see how that goes and see if you like it then you could wood age the whole batch if you want yeah it's a good cool. idea yeah um all right guys you got any other questions for the doctor's homebrew but I got one one question. We've toy, we've done some trying to add fruit to the sour, and I'd like mm. to hear your thoughts on if that's a, you think it's a good idea. What fruits you might think are interesting to go with it? I think it's always yeah. a good idea. I I would think so. You want to stay on the lighter stone fruit, maybe some citrusy. I don't know. Citrus and sour is hard because I was trying to play off what I perceive as like an orangey thing in there already, but. I think apricots are always good. You can't go wrong with that. Yeah, Ap agreed. apricot, peach, or cherry are going to be some really good ones to use. Yeah. Um, but I wouldn't, you know, if you're adding fruit at this point and then you're going to age it another six months and or to a year, it's, you know, the fruit, you, you should drink a fruited sour sooner and not once it's fruited, not yeah. let it age more and more because that fruit's just going to start going away. Um, you know, but yeah, cherry is a great one. Have some fun with it. Do pull something off into another small carboy and, and fruit it yeah. one one carboy at a time as you can. Yeah, what yeah. little little one gallon growler size things. You know, you can put, play with different fruits. You know, put like like you said, put an apricot in one. Like Brian was saying, put cherry in another one. You know, use use the ones that people know work. Do a yeah. gallon at a time. What's the worst that happens? You get a terrible gallon and you dump it out. I try to get good quality fruit. You know, from a farmer's yeah. market or are grown up, you know, tree ripened on your own a tree or someone, you know, and you know, that'd be that the fresher, the fruit, the better it's going to be too. grocery store fruit. You know, it's not yeah. been, you know, it's been ripened on the way to the store. Yep. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. If that's it, we'll let you guys go. All right. Oh, that's great. Thanks. Appreciate cool. it. Cool. Awesome. Really Thanks guys. All right, guys, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. And uh, we we'll look forward to having you on again. And you guys listening, stay right there. We'll be right back with another beer on Dr. Homebrew. Don't go anywhere. All right. Thanks for sticking around, everybody. We are back on Dr. Homebrew with Jake. Jake, welcome to the show. Hey, how's it going? Good, man. I, I've got to say, you look cozy as hell right now. You got yeah. like a yeah. nice little sweater going on. You got the full beard, the bald head, and uh, you're in a dark room. You look like... I don't know. Mariah Carey is going to come out and kiss you on top of your head right now. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what I'm really hoping. Um, yeah, it's <laughs> cold here and uh, nice and cozy. It's sweater season for sure. Yeah, absolutely, man. I in the studio it gets super hot, and then I go outside and it's like freezing. So I'm in shorts and a t-shirt, but I go out to like get this beer. I'm like, oh my god, I need a sweat. I need like a cozy. Well, I love sweaters. I can't wait to put yeah. mine on, man. He's talking yeah. California freezing though. So it's, it's California <laughs> freezing. So like in the house, it's like 68. Oh, it's oh, like 60. Man. It's Eight. chilly. Watch Ooh. out. <laughs> it, it's been cold here lately, though. I mean, the other day, yes. we actually had 
the uh, wind sh- car windshield was frozen at six o'clock oh. in the morning. Had to nice. get the defrost, put the defrost on and stuff. Yeah. You know, it was it was pretty cold. There was actually a frost warning, and the it was only for like an hour because my wife's plants were all outside. She's like, oh my god, my plants going to die! I'm like, well, it's it'll, it'll be it's supposed live. to be for like an hour. It'll be fine. I think they're fine. Yeah, I think they're all right. Yeah. Um, all right, Jake, what do you got for us here, man? What beer did you send us? So I sent you a pumpkin beer. Um, and I just got a disclaimer that I'm, I'm no aficionado of pumpkin beers, but they're fun to make okay. once a year. Okay. And I believe I once heard you JP say that you liked pumpkin beers. So when I, I sent that other beer, I thought, what the hell I'll send him a pumpkin as well. Nice. I appreciate that, man. I do like pumpkin beers. I am not afraid to admit it. I will say that with my full chest, man. I like yeah. them. They're not, uh, something I can have all the time. Yeah. But I I do appreciate them. It's one of the few styles that I'm interested to see how people make. And, like, I'm excited to drink it. It's like, oh, my gosh, what am I going to get? More spices? Am I going to get a little bit of, you know, roasted pumpkin kind of flavor going on? What am I, you know, what's going to happen here? So I'm, I'm, I, I appreciate it. I'm thrilled. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, Char, what's your turn? Uh, butter, butterino? <laughs> but, but, B-U-T-T-E-R, arena? Could we have said that uh, diastole? Beer. Even if you want, I don't know. Yeah, I'm just. Uh, I what am I doing tonight? I was. I, I'm. I am i awake? Was even happening? I was going on. Uh, Jake, I've, I have to ground myself somehow here, so I don't just totally go on tilt. I have to ask the question I always ask: Are you in a homebrew club? Yeah, um, I'm a member of the Louder Day Brewers in Salt Lake. <laughs> Oh God, I love Every that. Time. That's one of the better ones I've heard. The louder time. day brewers. I, I love I love beer pods. You know, I, I know many people on the on the brewing network aren't always real fond of the beer puns. I can never get it up. And that's that's just awesome. So <laughs> uh cool. All Salt Lake uh brewers listening, uh go check out the uh Lauder Day Brewers. It, you'll enjoy. Uh I like this beer. It's I, I'm kind of in between maybe JP and Coop as far as pumpkin beer. Like I don't love them. I don't hate them, but it's fun this time of year. You know, there are some good ones out there and it's always fun to have one. that's good. Uh, open this fun. One up. What am I, I'm on tilt. What am, what am I even doing JP? I mean, I'm, you know what, you know what I always like, I, what the two things I like fun and good and, and good <laughs> beers. And especially when, when those good beers are fun to have, I, I, I'm, I'm double the trouble, man. Can't get yeah, them off I, me. I, yeah, maybe I'm delirious. I don't. Am I, is, am I real? Is any of this real and happening? Right, yeah, yeah. I'm, you're doing great. Hunting for the fun on the on the score sheet. Where do you list <laughs> see what fun? happening? Yeah, there's there's uh, a checkbox for that somewhere. There's a low so, to medium fun on the opening. Yeah. See, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I thought maybe I just put that in a, in a PDF somehow to add that fourth box at the bottom. God, that'd be so good. I should, should be, talk to Gordon yeah. about that. Should be right between estuary and grassy, but it's not there. Yeah. <laughs> If there's ever a a a a, 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 a um, proctor whatever that you can do for the show, what are you showing me? Yeah. Well, oh, I, I, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry, my wife is interrupting my work to give me a beer. Um, mm-hmm. wah, wah. Yeah, whatever. Who cares? Go ahead, uh, Sh- okay. Shark. Go ahead. Keep going. Okay, aroma. I opened up this bottle. I poured it, and uh, the first whiff I got was sort of a pumpkin skin acetaldehyde. And I struggled with this for a while because I I was never great at noticing acetaldehyde until uh, Nicole Ernie, uh, you're on on one of the shows, I believe, was talking to us about acetaldehyde and how it can be like a pumpkin skin aroma. So I was really wrestling with, is this acetaldehyde or is it pumpkin? Because the bottle says you'd added some pumpkin to the beer. And I, I, I found that... I still don't know. We'll find out at the end here, maybe what's really going on with this. But fresh I had a, pumpkin. yeah, it was like a fresh pumpkin kind of character in the aroma. So I, I knocked it some for acetaldehyde, even though I maybe I even made it probably it's the pumpkin, but it's, it's hard to tell for me. Uh, medium malt with some caramel components, no hop aroma, six out of 12 for aroma uh, appearance. A uh, very low head, probably from spices. Usually, you start spicing things, and uh, well, you can't see that now. Uh, and it, it kills the head of virtually anything. Uh, crystal clear, colors light brown. So give it two for appearance. The uh, flavor initially got that kind of pumpkin character and nutmeg, which I thought the nutmeg was really well handled. You did a great job with the nutmeg. That's one of those spices that's really strong. 
and it's so easy to go over the top. I mean, it can be a matter of probably like just milligrams of nutmeg from being pleasant to being unpleasant and just being too much. And it's a tricky spice. I think you did really, really well with that. You know, there's some nutmeg character, but it's not dominant. It's maybe one of the few beers I've ever had that didn't go, that had nutmeg that didn't go nutmeg crazy. Uh, even things, even baked goods that have nutmeg, uh, I don't always like those for the, for the same reason. Maybe I'm just sensitive to it. Who knows? The um, I, I because of the, I made a note. It was almost like a beer de garde in terms of a, which I haven't had a beer de garde for ages. But they they have a flavor I like to think of as being like a cellar aroma, it's not an off or a cellar flavor, and it's not to me an off flavor. It's just kind of a something to me that reminds me of a of a cellar. Uh, I think that was the pumpkin in this. A uh, very low bitterness, no hop flavor. I, I didn't really get much cinnamon or ginger, uh, which were ingredients that you, you said were there in the bottle. I, I think that if those hadn't been declared ingredients, I'd have come up, you know, three or four or five points in my my score. Uh, again, I appreciate the restraint because ginger can overtake <laughs> everything in a hurry. It's like nutmeg. If you have nutmeg and ginger, unless you really know what you're doing, you can really just blow out you know, the whole the whole flavor and aroma of a beer, but it's nothing but one of those two things. And I, I appreciate going the other direction and being a little more restrained with that. It's well attenuated, finishes balanced uh, towards spice. It's also kind of a quick finish. It's interesting for the, a spice beer, maybe because of the attenuation or something. A lot of times the spice beer like hangs on your tongue for a while. The, the spices, they, they don't here. I mean, they're pleasant. You enjoy them. You have the finish and it's done. And it's not something that's just you're, you're licking your roof of your mouth for the next five minutes, trying to wonder why you're still tasting that. Uh, give it an 11 for flavor. Uh, Mouthfeel, uh, almost no carbonation, low body. Uh, there's no warming, neither creamy nor astringent. Uh, I think especially with an amber beer being the base, which should have a little more body, a little more carbonation. Uh, I gave that a three, uh, knocked off a couple of points for that. So we're three out of five for mouthfeel, uh, six for overall impression uh, for a total of 28. Actually, I had, let me just, let me back up here. I had made a, a note here. I should give it a seven. So we make a total of 20. No, never mind. It's 28. I'm, my writing, I'm, I'm so on tilt, JP, tonight. I'm I don't know tilt. what's going on right now. <laughs> I just, I'm, <laughs> Uh, You're I'm, on while, tilt. While, Look at you. Well, while, while Cooper is is giving his, I'm going to just take a few deep breaths and get back back to normal here. Uh, I right. appreciated I, I appreciated the gentle hand on the spices. Uh, like I was saying earlier, I think that was really the right way to go here. Uh, but it's maybe a little bit too gentle with a couple of declared ingredients, and I just didn't really quite get those. Uh, you know, I, maybe, I I don't. I'm curious to hear about your process for how the pumpkin got in here. Uh, and I may just be totally mis misunderstanding the flavor that I'm thinking of as acetaldehyde. Uh, but we hear about your process. I think that'll help me understand what's actually going on uh, a little better. Uh, you know, I, I think it's a great idea. It's a great thing to brew once a year. And hopefully you'll send us one again in 2024. So thanks very much. Very good. What was the number again, Char? Uh, 28. 28. All right. Cooper, let's go, man. Light it up. All right. <clears throat> Okay. Don't, uh, don't be yeah, tripping the, though. Don't be wilding out well, like not. Char. JP, uh, <laughs> I will not trip. Brian, go get a paper bag. Read into it <laughs> a few times. Um, light hiss upon opening. Uh, pumpkin ale with cinnamon, nutmeg, and ginger. Okay. Um, it was very cold when I first judged it, and I'm letting it warm up. I've been letting it warm up since we, you know, I opened it around, you know, six forty-five or whatever, six fifty, and it's now. Yeah, almost you know quarter to nine, so it's warmed up substantially, and I, I did want that to happen. Um, in the nose, I got only faint spices coming across. Earlier, I felt like the the ginger kind of won. Uh, I might be a little sensitive to the ginger, but I definitely get a ginger in there. Uh, but it just has you know a hint of of cinnamon only, and that's still true. I'm not getting a lot of cinnamon at all. Uh, kind of a medium low nutmeg uh, that is nice and restrained. And I, I do appreciate that. Like Brian said, um, you know, the malt ca character is kind of sweet seeming, but it's not overtly caramelly rich or, you know, it's just faintly caramelly, a little nutty, maybe uh, clean ale, no DMS or diacetyl to me. Also, I didn't really get any acetaldehyde. Um, 
the aromas were low overall in the earlier judging, but they're coming through a little more strongly now because it's at a better judging temperature. So I apologize for that. Uh, but yeah, for an autumn seasonal, I, I do still want it to be maybe a little bolder than than that um, and have the, the spice character come through just a bit more. I, I def definitely don't want to go crazy on that because I, like JP, I could... You know, or like Brian, maybe more. I Whoa. like a, a, a pumpkin ale once in a great while. I like to taste one that's really well made and that makes me have fun. Yeah, um, fun. Fun is the the key aspect there. So you're gonna make, mark this on maximum fun. I will. <laughs> um, the beer is quite quite clear, uh, amber, you know, a deep amber colored beer uh, with a low head of fine white bubbles that persists pretty well. Um, it um, yeah, nothing really wrong with the appearance. I gave it three out of three there. Uh, flavor wise, it's lightly malty uh, and very light on the hops. There might be a little faint toffee in the malt. It's not really caramelly. Um, just kind of generally a slight darker malt character, but not anything really distinctive. Um. There's not a lot of spice covering up either, so there's something I'd like the malt to kind of come through a little more than than it is, even as it warmed. Um, it's quite dry, uh, but not bone dry. Still has a hint of some sweetness, but overall, it's it's on the drier side for what I'd want. Uh, one of the nice things about a pumpkin spice beer is when it plays kind of candy like, or like a dessert, or like a pie, and you you want that you want the sweetness is going to be part of that aspect of it which is why pumpkin is such a terrible ingredient to put in a beer why would anyone ever do that um I, you know i mean if you're going to use pumpkin i would because a, it's there That's roast why. it and be use a light hand on it because all it's going to do is dry out your beer too much and this, you're not going to have the sweetness to accent it unless you really just go crazy with your mash temp or add other malts um uh, you know Kara malts or something that's going to add more body um, to the to the beer, add more unfermentable uh, starches that are going to that are going to stay in there and leave some uh, hint of a sweetness. Um, anyway, I digress. Um, you know this of the spices, I, uh, the ginger and the and the nutmeg kind of linger into the aftertaste a bit. The, the cinnamon is is really low, almost hard to, almost not detect detectable. Um, the bitterness medium low and out of the way, that's good. You got a clean ale fermentation. I really like the the cleanliness of the beer. To me, seems fine. Not getting any acid aldehyde here. I do get a little pumpkin flavor, but I think that's from the fresh pumpkin that you used. Um, no obvious issues to me. So, um, probably a little higher on uh, flavor i landed at a 13 on the out of 20 on the flavor uh my mouth feel wise it's medium light bodied no astringency um it's you know which is good in a spice beer if you over spice it it can be real easy to get it you know harsh and biting um but yeah it's not very creamy as a beer goes but it's medium to medium medium low co2 no obvious warmth here Actually, that's another thing you could do is let it get a little stronger, give it a little alcohol boost to, to make it seem a little sweeter um, if you want to go that direction. But this one seems like a middle of the road amber ale, you know, maybe five and a half, six percent, I would guess if I had to guess. Uh, but yeah, it's a bit light feeling overall. It's not not too heavy on the palate, but it's mostly fine there in mouthfeel uh, for a spiced amber ale with with an adjunct. Um so overall, it's, it's, it's a well-crafted pumpkin spice beer. It's got a lot going for it. It's clean. I would suggest dropping back the adjunct, you know, by quite a bit, if possible. You can just add a, a chunk of pumpkin in there and say it's a pumpkin beer. Uh, you know, don't listen uh, to them. Don't absolutely don't do that. Get your get your sweetness from the malt and let the spices do it. When you're tasting a pumpkin spice beer, you're not usually really tasting much of the pumpkin with everything else that's there. That's my opinion. JP, you can say whatever you want after that. <laughs> I, would, 
up the I agree with you, Coop. I'll say what I want when I want to, okay? You could make a pumpkin beer with absolutely no pumpkin that would score really well in a competition. I guarantee you that. Yes, but why would you want to do that? Just to be weird? I don't know. But because it's going to be sweeter and be more dessert-like and candy-like, which... But that's just I, a spice beer. It's not a pumpkin beer. I would prefer it to be, no. Yeah. Um. Well, anyway, is that it? Are you done... Brian. Yeah, yeah. get your mash temp up. If you're going to use a lot of pumpkin, get it up toward 160 to coax out a little more sweetness and body from this one. Um, I would also bring up the spices a bit, especially the cinnamon. Uh, but, you know, they're kind of nice where they are. I like that they're restrained and they're not overpowering, but they're almost a little too restrained. It's not like, okay, this has got a good level of spice. It's like, okay, this is a light, dry, amber beer with very low spice and it's okay. But, you know, I, I like the beer as it is. It's clean. It landed at 35 out of 50. Brian and I are seven points apart. So if this were a competition, we'd have to discuss and take each other out back and beat each other over the head with something, yeah. figure it out. Kiss but each other. I think okay. it's a it's a very good beer. Cool. Thanks Let's take a, a quick break before we get to Jake, and we're going to come back. We'll wrap it wrap this up and, and uh, all that kind of fun stuff. So hang on. It's Dr. Homebrew. We'll be right back. All right, thanks for sticking around, everybody. We are back with Jake. Brian and Brian have made their ruling. Uh, it's funny, I've been watching um, <clears throat> that botched show. Remember that show? That's um, huh. plastic surgery show where these two dudes in Hollywood are like, one's a, like a breast augmentation you know, specialist and the other guy does nose jobs. And it's very funny. Um, and then they trade jobs and they see what happens. <laughs> yeah. They go, Why am I smelling twice out of my nipples? Um but they just put the first series on Netflix, and it's like they have a great rapport, and it just I don't know, sort of reminds me of uh, of Doctor Homebrew. If we were funny, I have no desire yeah. to watch that show. It's great. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. It's so funny. It's like you everyone, everyone needs that one reality show, and I have apparently a couple. Uh, um, anyways, <laughs> Nick, this right. is your pumpkin beer. I mostly agree with most of what the guys were saying. Mostly agree with with uh, with most. This is a fun beer. And um, it is sort of a middle of the road amber. It is sort of light. There is not a whole lot going on. It's kind of a thinner body uh, amber. I would like to know what uh, you know. We'll get into the the numbers there. I would love to see it almost like a brown ale, kind of beefier a little bit. Um, to me, it's hard to pick out the ginger. I think I can pick out the ginger because ginger has this like sweetness to it that is that is sort of easily definable, and I think that's what I get. But I feel it's distracting from everything. Um, I do think all the spices can come up a little bit, but that's provided, you know, I think that the malt is, is you know, comes up a little bit too because those spices, I think, work with darker beers because of the the kilned malts and how sweet those kind of crystal malts are. And those give some body and some, some sort of like mid-palate feel some boost to those spices. You know, you never put these spices in a pale ale because they're just the malt's not there. So... Um, I think, I think uh, going in with the malt would would help amplify some of these a little bit more too. I want to know what you did with the pumpkin. Um, I can taste it a little bit. Um, and anyway, we'll go with that, and then and then I'll I'll give you my feedback on the pumpkin. So uh, tell us about your recipe, man. Okay, cool. Um, well, first of all, I thought Char was going to give me an on the fly point boost, and he tricked me, <laughs> and he changed his mind. <laughs> well he was Coop, supposed Coop, to give him yeah yeah here's even further behind the scenes coop and i had 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 a, a brief text discussion like maybe a half an hour before that and because i'm so on tilt tonight i did not do what i was supposed i was going to come up a point or two and this i realized on the fly i i couldn't do it quite on the fly and i was not sure then which way was i supposed to go and i i freaked out and that didn't change anything so that's the exciting world of podcasting for you people that are listening. Yeah. All the exciting insight into my my brain. So well, I was supposed to come down a point, but I didn't do that either. So we just talked about the seven point differential, and that's it's it's some, okay to be seven apart. Some competitions allow it. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Well, I appreciate the candidness. I wouldn't want you to bullshit me. Um, <laughs> okay, the recipe is thirty um, percent Munich, thirty percent Vienna. Um, and 30% Chevalier, which I normally do Maris Otter, but I had Chevalier on hand, so I use that instead. Um, and then 7% Carapils and about a percent of chocolate, just for the color. Okay. Um, a gram, not a gram, an ounce of Magnum 
um, at 60 minutes and then half an ounce of EKG at 20 minutes. Um, and then I use Imperial AO9 Pub for the yeast. Um, mash temp was 152. Um, and I kind of aimed for like a amber ale water profile. I started with RO and just added to it. All right. <clears throat> Let's get down to it, though, man. What did you, now that you mentioned the on. Munich, come on. Now that you mentioned the Munich, though, I can taste oh, yeah. the Munich a lot. Hmm. Oh. Yeah, you know, those are the Munich and the amber make for a good base malts for a beer like this. When you're you're blending it with some, uh, you know, some pale malt, um, that's a good start. But then I'm, I kept waiting for you to say that you know a caramel or crystal or this or that. There's a little cara and a little tiny bit of chocolate. That's all that's there to give the extra flavor, which is what was kind of missing to me. Mm -hmm. And the mash yeah. temp was lower than I'd want. Uh, right. Yeah. I but... did. I did omit one crucial ingredient, which was and, the pumpkin. Yes. How much of that? <laughs> <laughs> so in the mash, I added a whole, um, what is it like? 28 ounce can, the bigger can of pumpkin puree. And then in the boil, I added basically an entire pumpkin that I grew in my yard. Um, and then <laughs> I, it's a, it's a culinary, it's a, called a Jaredale pumpkin. It's also like an Australian variety. It's blue. Um, they're good for eating. Okay. But, um, anyway, wow. so I cut that in half and I roasted it in the oven with some brown sugar for a couple hours. And then I added that for the whole boil. Um, so that's where the pumpkin came from. So quite a bit really. Yeah. Good. That's that's yeah. I've never had one of those types of pumpkins. It sounds interesting. It would explain like the lower body because the pumpkin always ferments out all the way, whatever sugars you get out of that. And it, if, if you add an entire how how big is an entire pumpkin of that variety? Is it like 10 pounds or two pounds or what? It, it's pretty big, probably closer to 10 pounds. Like it's a lot. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I suspect that not to interrupt you, I don't want to hear more about this. My, if I had to guess, I'm guessing the reason why we're tasting like that, or I'm tasting like that pumpkin skin acetaldehyde is that rather than converting in the mash, they kind of converted in the boil. And maybe that that skin and everything else got exposed to those really high temperatures. And then either, either it tasted like acetaldehyde or maybe it gave off some acetaldehyde in that process. I'm not, I'm not a chemist. I'm just trying to think about why I got some of that aroma and that flavor. And I, I've never heard of anyone using the pumpkin by you know, cutting it up and throwing it in the boil. I mean, I, I appreciate your creativity. But I, I've, I've never heard of that. And you clarified the beer well, too. I mean, that, I would think all the starches, you'd probably have a haze problem, but it's perfectly clear. And that's nice. Yeah, thanks. What um, were your uh, numbers? What were your gravities? Um, you know. <laughs> Classic. It ended up about five and a half percent. Okay. Um, uh, sorry, I don't have. I can't find that info right now. That's all right. Um, Top yeah, secret. Pretty, I get it. Yeah, no, it's pretty dry. Um, and sure, I I detected that whatever off flavor you thought you might have got. I kind of was there. There's something about it to me that I'm not sure if I like or not, and I think it maybe is what you're talking about, and I don't know what it is. Yeah, I, I, so when you throw in ten pounds of a of a any vegetable into your boil, I, I think you're you're probably rolling the dice on um, whether you're going to like how that that comes out or what flavors come out of that or not. Yeah, for sure. But uh, yeah, to yeah. me, this, there's nothing super gnarly. It's drinkable, and I'm, no. I mean J, JP yeah, it's is. not it drinkable. It's not fine. Offensive, seriously it, offensive. It's not offensive. It's just it's it, if I was uh, you know I'm going to be more judgmental if I was paying for it, right? So if I went to a bar and got this beer and paid for it and said, hey, I want the fun beer, and they gave this to me, I would be a little disappointed because it's sort of, it's like middle of the road like we've already talked about. Um, but it's made well. The flavors are, are good. I just want more of them. Uh, Andrew in the chat is saying, a boiling pumpkin seems to not do anything. Those starches would be lost, I would think. Maybe. It, it could be. I mean, you're going to have some conversion as you go from room temperature pumpkin up to boiling pumpkin. 
depending how much you cut it up and the surface area and everything else, you're going to have uh, as, it, as the pumpkin passes through that you know 145 to 160 F temperature range, that doesn't happen instantly. And I, I bet, I mean, even if you had a full boil, did you, was it, were you going at a full boil when you threw the pumpkin in or would you, did you raise everything up at the same time from like essentially mash temperature? Um, I probably raised it. Yeah. Okay. So there, there will be, I mean, it takes time to come up and I, I agree with uh, the, the commenter uh, that, I mean, it's not going to be as efficient as having it be sitting in your mash tun for an hour at a controlled temperature. It's going to be a starch conversion temp, but you are going to rise through that band of temperatures. So you'll get some conversion out of that. Not as much as you would if you mashed it. Yeah. You're just going to get more of the external vegetal kind of component of the pumpkin. Yeah. And, you know, it's nice that it was yeah. roasted. I think that's helping your yeah. cause here. But yeah, again, a lot of that starch, the listener is right. A lot of that starch is just locked up in the in yeah. the meat of the pumpkin. The, the best pumpkin beer I've ever had is from Rogue. And they take like sugar pumpkins that they grow on the farm there and they cut them up and then they roast those and then put them in. And I think it's just, I, I, I can't remember if they chop them up into like cubes and roast those so there's more surface area to uh you know with with the caramelized sugars versus steamed you know vegetable yeah um i think that might help too but it was it was such an impactful flavor it was like the first time i was like oh my god this is very very good yeah i think you know as this warms up i think everything is is fine i think what it is is the amber ale base that we've sort of picking on a little bit but i think if that was if that had more body malts to it and everything else was the same, we would be having a different conversation. Because I think that, yeah. that those sort of crystal malts can either hide or perhaps pair with the uh, the sort of pumpkin in the boil aspect that we were get that we're getting. And we wouldn't be focusing so much on on how the pumpkin was added. So I think you can keep everything the same and just change the base, which you probably don't have any more of these pumpkins left of, but what do I know? Um, and try to go for like a, a beefier, maltier base, do the same thing. And I think it would be, I mean, you'd, you'd probably get, you know, five points out of that. Do it next year's harvest. Yeah. And, and yeah. then maybe just instead of putting it in the boil, just put it in the mash instead of the pumpkin puree. Just roast it until it's, you know, nice and, and, and kind of loosened up and the starches are more available. Mix them in the mash, you know, scrape, you know, whatever you can do to get the, the, the starches mixed in with that mash mash at a higher temperature and add some uh, some crystal malts or uh, a, a, a caramunic or so, just something a little more know. characterful in there. I like the pumpkin flavor. I, yeah. I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it. I would just change the base beer. That's what I would. Yeah. Do. I mean, change, change one thing at a time and that's a good, a good advice usually. Yeah, so and you know what? Four years. I, let's let's not, out. yeah, but <laughs> let, let's not forget that. I mean, I think your spicing level, the nutmeg level was perfect. I think that was great. Yes. Uh, yes. I will rarely say this. A little more cinnamon, a little more ginger might be good. Yep. Uh, that or just cut them out. You know, I think it's hard to, or or put them in at a little bit higher level. You still don't taste them. Just don't tell anybody. <laughs> That's, you, don't, you don't have to declare the ingredient if you don't taste it. I think so, the cinnamon would help. Cinnamon is a nice spice for yeah, this. Yeah, I, I agree. I like it. Um, Jake, do you have questions? Yeah, thanks. Um, that's actually some of the same feedback I've got is, People taste the nutmeg, not the cinnamon or the ginger. Yeah. So that's for sure consistent. Um, so when you say up the the base, would you just pivot and go more brown ale, or would you just make this a higher gravity amber? I would personally because I like the sweetness from the brown ale, and I uh, a amber ales aren't my preferred style. So uh, you know, but at the end of the day, you're drinking it. So if you if you enjoy an amber, you want these flavors together then, you know, do that. But I think that personally, these kind of beers lend themselves better to more brown ales than they do lighter, lighter beers. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's kind of tricky to really refine this recipe because I only make it once a year because it's fun to make, not because I want five gallons of the goddamn <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, I get you, man. But I do have those pumpkins actually save really well. You just stick them in the basement. They last for like six months. It's crazy. So I got really? a bunch more. Maybe I'll make another batch nice. um, just to see what I can do. Um, yeah, yeah, go go for just, it. Yeah, have and some then fun. Get, get, some, right? get some bombers, get some 22-ounce bottles and give them away to all your friends and neighbors at Christmas time. Yeah, yeah right on. 
Um, okay, yeah, no, that's all really good advice and feedback. I've been taking some notes, but I think we've kind of covered everything, I think. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, all right. I wanted to mention uh, yeah. the last one we did. I, you remember I followed Julia hers. Yeah. And that was awful, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> yeah. He's yeah, a hard that? act to follow, man. That's for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I had been, I had meant to mention this, but I had been listening to a podcast that she was on. I can't remember which one. And she was like, Hey, enter NHC this year, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. I'll do it. And I did. Mm. And I did. Okay. And then I just, got really into competing and it's all because of her. So I just wanted nice. to like shout out to her. Awesome. That's awesome. Very cool, yeah. man. No, she, she's got... really, she's really smart. She's really an engaging speaker and she was a fantastic guest. Awesome yeah. energy. And yeah, yeah, I always enjoy judging with her, talking to her every time we meet. Yeah. yeah, she's cool. All right, Jake, if that's it, man, you're free to go. Yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Thanks, thanks. man. Yeah. Send us another Take one care. down the road. Yeah. Right on. See you guys. All right. Bye. All right, that's it. We're done. We're out of here, folks. We don't have to take another break. We're great. We're good. Yeah. Yeah. And if, if you want to um, be on this show, you go email Brian. Go to your email computer and email Brian at thebrewingnetwork.com. You do that, and Brian will get back to you, and he'll say he'll send you a long email that basically just says, send JP beer, and we'll figure it out. And that's all you do. Yeah. That's it. You have to worry about it. What kind of beers do we uh, do we take, Brian Char? Brian with an I. We're uh, <laughs> Brian Char. What do you we want? We take anything anything fermented, pretty much. Does no no poison a... ivy meads. No, uh, you know, nothing <laughs> nothing with thing? poop. Uh, I at the uh, it, there was about many years ago at like the first B three forum comp. I didn't oh, judge God. this one. Yeah. This was it when when EJ Fair was still under construction. It was literally uh, no, it wasn't. It, it was at at more beer that one mm -hmm. one back room you guys had, mm -hmm. and someone at the next table refused to judge a poison ivy mead because they're allergic to poison ivy. <laughs> so oh. I, you know, I doesn't. I'm sure it was fine. Uh, nobody died when they drank it, but no, no poop, no, was, you know, but like that, just normal normal fermented beverages. We'd love poison? to have some. Poison ivy mead is just kind of like, eh, dare ya? I fucking dare I know. ya. You it's know? Like, how do you how do you know that that those bees went to poison ivy flowers? Seriously, did you set up in a field of poison ivy? No, no, there's not a field of poison ivy anywhere. Do, like, do I guess poison, maybe out in the woods, but you know, does poison put, ivy like flower. I've never I have seen, no idea. I've never seen it flower. I'm, I'm from Minnesota. I know what poison ivy looks okay. like. Yeah. I then think some, somebody doesn't. named it something. Someone named it that. And oh, listeners, yeah. if any one of you entered that, uh, <laughs> you you want to fess up and tell us whether that was really poison ivy, honey? Uh, we'd love to hear about it. Yeah. Or that poison was a fun ivy, comp. like a uh, herbed mead with poison ivy yeah. as the sure. add, added spice. I don't know. Yeah, maybe they soaked it. Yeah, who knows? Yeah, uh, that was a fun comp. I started that comp. That was my thing. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Back in the day, it was my contribution to the world. One of them. One of many, because I'm so awesome. Um, all right, we're going to get out of everybody. If you're listening live, hang on for just a sec. We're going to come right back. We have two more beers to drink, and, uh, and it's going to be a good time. So check that out. If you're listening on the podcast, we have all these other shows to listen to. I forget how many. And, of course, all the other shows on the network. So uh, check those out as well. All right. They're fun. Next time. We'll see you. Cheers. Guys.